Melbourne. He told her he was going to bed to watch the cricket. But a prostitute has told police she was in his Boulevard hotel suite later that night, the suite where his body was discovered the next day. Today, coroner Derek Hand found the 54-year-old did die from a mixture of alcohol and methadone. But he was unable to find whether the methadone was taken voluntarily or was slipped into his drink, or how many other people had been in Schwab's room. Nikki Stimson says Schwab snatched her bottle of methadone and drank the contents. The coroner ruled out any suggestion Schwab used cocaine and said the versions of events from Nikki Stimson, a heroin addict, were extremely suspect. She failed to appear today. Schwab's sudden death has unveiled another side to the man who devoted his life to AFL football. The coroner has heard prostitutes kept him company while he lived temporarily in Sydney overseeing the Swans. Schwab's wife Lynette said her husband became totally irresponsible when he drank. Schwab's son Cameron, who's been at the inquest with his brother and sister, said he feared his father drank too much. Kate Davies, Seven Nightly News. A sponsorship row has erupted between a local pie maker and the AFL. Balfour's, a key backer of the Adelaide Crows, is considering legal action against the league over the use of players in rival promotions. South Australia's oldest pie maker has exclusive rights on the Crows to promote its products. But according to Balfour's, the AFL isn't playing by the rules. Crows players have appeared in promotions for rival products. It's a disappointment this day that you, uh, you put a lot of time and a lot of effort into these things and someone can just uh, use other means to which they can get uh, sponsorship. Balfour's believes its sponsorship agreement has been breached by the AFL. It's looking at the legal options available. Support for the Crows will continue. Balfour's says the club isn't at fault. What's at stake is a wider sponsorship issue. What is the value of a sponsorship if the club you're negotiating with uh, can have all its rights and protections assigned to it under a sponsorship agreement turned over by the AFL. The Adelaide Football Club is concerned at the looseness of licensing and advertising rights. It's written to the AFL and wants mechanisms put in place to protect club sponsors. It says the use of Tony Modra in an interstate promotion was an oversight by the Stars manager and has been withdrawn. Narelle Hill, Seven Nightly News. Now to sports news and Max, Tony Modra will play on Sunday. That's right, Jane. We speak with Tony after the break and Norwood dropped Sturt like a hot potato. Good evening. Full forward, Tony Modra will be making himself available this week for the game against the West Coast Eagles at Football Park on Sunday. Despite a nagging back injury, Modra says he must return this weekend. Back training with the Crows for the first time since injuring his back against the Bears, Tony Modra is a much needed player this week against the West Coast. He's also very aware with the loss of Sean Wren, he must fire at full forward. Train last night for the first time this week, Maxie, and it's looking good for this week and I just can't wait to get out there on Sunday. So definitely be playing against the West Coast? 100%. Sean Wren, a big loss, so the players are going to have to live. Sean Wren is a big loss and everyone's just going to add that extra 10% to their game for the rest of the year and to make up for that loss. Meantime, St Kilda's Daryl Wakelin has been reported under the trial by video system by field umpire Mark Nash. He's been charged with striking Greg Anderson with a forearm to the head during the second quarter of Sunday's match at Football Park. The hearing commenced 15 minutes ago via video hookup between Adelaide and Melbourne. And now joining us live from Crows Training at Football Park is Bruce Lindner. And Bruce, I understand you caught up with Sean Wren in hospital today. Yes, I did, Max. I spoke to Sean. He told me that the surgeon's more than happy with the way the operation progressed. He'll uh, be recuperating at Arno Bay for a couple of weeks and then he's back into rehabilitation. His sight's firmly set on season 1996, so it doesn't look like we'll see Sean Wren playing again this year. Bruce, other injuries. Tony Hall, what's the situation? Well, he jogged a couple of laps slowly tonight. I think he's got a recurrence of the injury that kept him out a couple of weeks ago, so I don't think he'll play. Simon Tregenza, just about ready? Well, Simon Tregenza and Sean Wellman both left the track early tonight. Simon, I think, will have another week's rest. And as for Sean Wellman, well, he'll be tested later on in the week. The feeling down there this week, Bruce? Well, obviously disappointment because of Sean Wren, but it gives a number of players an opportunity to take responsibility for a big game, especially against the West Coast this week. Good on you, Bruce. We'll leave it there. Locally, you can forget about a Norwood Sturt merger because the Red Legs have. The league's decision to leave the Crows at Football Park has left Sturt without a friend and a future.
A Norwood Sturt merger was the logical option. The Red Legs happy to help the struggling Double Blues. They joined forces again to lure the Crows to the parade. Both campaigns failed. Now Norwood's dumped Sturt. Having not won the, won the vote, then uh, it goes by the board. What about the Double Blues' future? Well, only the SANFL and Sturt would know that at this stage. I'm not in a position to answer that. Uh, as we understand, it was dependent on the uh, relocation and certainly it provided a positive uh, option. But, um, Paul, until we have uh, the opportunity to speak with both clubs, uh, it'd be very difficult to um, predict what the scenario might be in the future. Sturt won't comment until after its board discusses the matter next week. But it's no secret the club is a year-by-year -year proposition. Nord is now left to deal with the disappointment. There's talk it hasn't given up on its AFL dream, while the SNFL says the Crows can now call Football Park home sweet home until 2005 and beyond. Paul Childs, 7 Nathy News. And for today, this beautiful Wednesday, that's all in sport. Now it's back to Jane. Thanks. It's our time again. Sports News, Max Stevens. Thanks, Graham. Coming up, we'll go around the grounds and show you what has happened to Sean Wren's knee. Also, Brian Lara returns to his home turf of Trinidad. Good evening. Sean Wren has had what most footballers fear, a knee reconstruction. But what does that really mean? His surgeon explains as we go around the grounds with Paul Childs. Sharp angle settles. Checks. Everyone has seen it and read about it. Sean Wren injuring the cruciate ligament in his knee. But what does that mean? Paul, the cruciate ligament's tucked right in behind the uh, kneecap here. This is the ligament. It's very important. It controls stability of the knee for twisting and turning. As in Sean's case, he landed and hyperextended the knee and this part of the bone came forward and pinched the ligament here. If you can think of a, a piece of rope that's been pulled very vigorously and just shattered into a number of bands, then that's exactly what happens to the cruciate ligament. And to fix it... We take the central part of the patella tendon, this is the central part of the patella tendon, and we also take a little piece of bone from the kneecap and a little piece of bone here from the tibia so that the new ligament becomes a piece of bone, ligament and bone. As a rule, Wren will be out for six months. Eagles skipper John Worsfold won't play against the Crows this Sunday, but they will regain Peter Matera and Michael Brennan. And good news for Geelong, Gary Hocking's back this week. Looking at the injuries, Footscray's lost two of its best for a month. Anthony Condon's out for the year, and Melbourne has yet another problem. Kicks well inside the... And Seven has five days of football starting on Friday. We've got two matches on Saturday and a delayed telecast of the Crows. But there's more, including the Collingwood-Essendon clash on Anzac Day. Paul Childs, Seven Nightly News. Nearly a year ago, Brian Lara made Test cricket history on his home turf in Trinidad. The third test between Australia and the West Indies starts tomorrow night on the same ground with Lara set to blitz. Here's Jim Wilson in Trinidad. Both sides will train here tomorrow. The Windies realising that time is running out. A lot of the pressure this week will once again fall on the shoulders of the man they call the Prince of Trinidad. This will be Brian Lara's first test back home since that world record innings of 375 against England in Antigua last year. And the locals can't wait to give their superstar a hero's welcome. <laughs> Lara comes from a family of 11 children, seven boys and four girls, and today his nieces and nephews joined us as we travelled to his home in a village outside of the capital. They've named the local ground the Brian Lara Recreational Oval. Mother Pearl displayed some of those magical moments of her son's star-studded career. Pearl will once again make the one-hour trek down from the Trinidad Highlands on Friday to watch her son, hoping he can produce some of the magic to help the Windies back into the series. Well, he loves the game and he well. In Trinidad, Jim Wilson, Seven Nightly News. And in closing tonight, make sure you watch The Crow Show and Seven Nightly News over the coming weeks. If you would like Tony Modra to come to your school, we have something very special in store. So stay tuned to Seven Nightly News. That's sport. Good night. Here's Jane. Can't wait. Thanks, Mick. Great crowd in tonight. Boy, have we got a great show lined up tonight. What a week it's been.
already they're investigating him. We won't find out till maybe tomorrow or even early next week whether or not Dermy will be fined. Of course, he's waiting for his wife, Tony, to have their first child as well. So it's a big week for Dermy after kicking four against Geelong.